from the occurrence ID on this side. Now if I just look at that, the photo's occurrence ID is zero, and it will become one, 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 two, two, three, three, four, four. Those are the numbers that will go in there. Now, you might want to be convinced of more than that. So let's put the, all the data from that side and all the data from that side on there as well. That might be too much information. Yes, but this, this, this one remains 33. Sure, it should. But we wanted, want, we, we wanted the, the, just the unique ID. I was thinking I wanted just the unique ID to match. But it won't be unique on the photos table. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, okay. 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 So this is too much information, clearly. Let me, let me do something else. Let's put photo number, scientific name, scientific name. Okay, so what it's telling me is that the record in photos that has this name and that photograph number yes. is going to get that occurrence ID. One. One. And so is this one. And so is this one because all those are for the same, the same specimen. The same specimen and having the same scientific name. Yep. Okay. So that looks okay. That it looks like what we really want to do. Now I will do that. And the way I do it is to set the occurrence ID for photos to be the occurrence ID for, from the occurrences for photos table. That's how it's done. run it. I'm about to put 33 values in. That sounds right. And then we go and look. And here they are. So now we have our images table with photo numbers and occurrence ID numbers in them. So where are the photos? They're here. This is the database about <coughs> photos. It's still, it was before and it is now as well. Now, I think that you're anticipating a really good observation and that is, okay, what we want to do is put all this information into his occurrence table. It doesn't need to be here anymore. It needs to be in the occurrence table. So we have that job still to do, to put all of that into occurrence. And when we do, we can throw away all of this and his photos table will be two fields. A photo number and an occurrence ID. And if you want to find everything out about the occurrence, you go to the occurrence table. So now my structure will be the, what I talked about from the very first moment. And that is two tables, one for the occurrence and one for the images. And this one contains information only about images. This isn't about the image. That's about the plant. Mm -hmm. The only thing about the image is the image's number, number and what plant is it attached to. attached to. In the future, if you want to capture more information about the image, mm -hmm. you would expand this table, add new fields to it, and enter the data in this table, image by image. Okay. For example, if you wanted to write down what was in it, Yes. Now, this is an image of a flower or a leaf or yeah. whatever. Okay. It would go in the image part. Okay. Okay, now my, my question is, if, if you have photos and you don't have the, the latitude and longitude, can this database give you a chance to, to go back to the field, get the, the GPS point, come back and insert it there? Sure. But you'll be inserting it into the occurrence table, not into the photos table. But if you, if you insert it, can, 
can someone like like, like if you update it in that way can 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 someone now relate that that particular photo that was collected maybe two years ago without a gps point can someone relate it if you update it sure okay what we will do is we'll actually go to the occurrence record yes that has all those photos yes and we'll update the latitude and longitude there okay and then if you look at the combination of the photos and the specimens yeah. all the photos will have that latitude and longitude okay because okay. they're related okay the specimen had a location the image was taken of the specimen yes okay fine if we can do that then it will be good because yeah. because if we if if we cannot if we cannot update the latitude and longitude then your database will be biased yeah that's right that's why I look at that's it. right okay and that's why we'll want to remove it from here we okay. don't want it in two places. Okay. Okay. But I don't want to do that until we're finished populating the occurrences the occurrence. table. Okay. So let's go ahead. Okay. So now we have some we have a new <coughs> issue to deal with. And that is that our original table of occurrences is this plant label senge. This doesn't have an occurrence ID yet. And we know that occurrences for photos is, has an occurrence ID and it needs it. Yes. It needs it because there are photos that rely on it. Okay. So this table needs an occurrence ID in it so that we can put the occurrence ID in there as well. Otherwise we lose that information and we lose the photos. Okay. Don't want but, that. But now, my, how are we going to match? Because these fields are more than the one in the in the photos. That's true. Yeah, these fields are more than. So how, how are we going to? That's true. I don't see how we match it. Except That's you that. Convince me. It's a trick. We we need to do something carefully here to accomplish this. But w the realization right now is, this table needs an occurrence ID. Okay. Because we have data with an occurrence ID. ID yes, and if we're going to put it in this table, we need an occurrence ID. Sure. Right? Yes. So let's put in an occurrence ID. Okay. I'm going to anticipate something when I do this. I'm going to create the occurrence ID, but I'm going to create it with an auto number again. Okay. And this is another place where you just have to trust me for a moment. Okay. Trust me again. Trust me again. I know it's hard. And I'll make it an auto number. OK. So now I have 278 occurrences mm -hmm. with occurrence IDs. And you immediately say, John, what have you done? Look, you created occurrence ID number one again. Yes, number one to 278. Right. And over here, in this table that we built for occurrences here, we have a number one. And they're not the same number one. They're different. Yes. We have to deal with that. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to deal with these 15? Because those 15. It's 1 to 2 to 17. Right. So those are all duplicated in the other table that we want to put it into. We can't just copy these over there. That will be a problem. So we need to code this number or what? What we need to do is we need to add all of these records to the other table mm -hmm. and to set the ID in the other table based on this ID okay. and then change this ID and also change the ID in the photos table. <laughs> we have to do it. So how do we do that? I'll go back to the final destination which is this one and I don't need auto numbering anymore. I can use just a number. Okay. I'll close this. I don't need that at the moment. I do need this. Yes. Now, the other, the other table is ready f to take these data. But I want to make sure that my occurrence IDs are done correctly. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to be adding 15 new records to my occurrence table. 15 new records to the 278? Yes. 
and the highest occurrence ID in the other table is 278. I'll confirm that because it would be a sad mistake if there weren't. So there are 278. But now I'm down at the bottom of this table and it's interesting because the last two don't even look like data. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that right now. Okay. We can clean up your data later. Let's get it all together first. Okay. So our highest occurrence ID is 278. Mm -hmm. So what if we add all of these starting at 279? Okay. They'll be unique then. Yes, yeah, they'll be unique. And they'll be sequential with all the other ones. Yes. So let's add these data to the other table, table. starting with 279. Mm -hmm. Then what about the 276, 277 in that is empty? We'll delete them. We'll worry about those later. Okay. Okay. Then we have to remember to change the occurrence ID in the photos table and add 278 to that also. Accepted. Because those two need to link. This will be 279. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in here, so that will be 279 also. In order to keep them properly linked together. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One one with 279. Yep. Two, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Accepted. Okay. Good. Now, there's one other issue. In our destination table, we do have an elevation field. We do have a latitude and longitude field. We have a family field. We do not have a scientific name field. We have a genus and a species, but not a scientific name. So we need to create a scientific name field over there also. Okay. But now, but now, if we if if we have, if the numbers be continuous, the the columns are not the same with this. How are we going to match the two? The the two seventy eight, the columns are not like in the same in the same uh, format like this. You're thinking like a spreadsheet. This isn't a spreadsheet. Those columns have names. The order doesn't make any difference. Okay. 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 And it doesn't matter that the number is different at all. Also, okay. when we did our mapping before, remember I was saying, okay, the alt was elevation. Yes. We were saying which one should be which one. Which one? And the other one wasn't elevation in meters; it was elevation. Yes. It was so elevation. we have to do that anyway. We have to tell it which field to go into. Ah. So that will go into elevation. Okay. That will go longitude. That will go latitude. That will go er occurrence ID. Okay. But this one right now does not have a home because there is no scientific name field over there. Okay. So we'll make one. We'll make, yeah. And then we have the problem of some of the records having scientific names, uh, some not. No. Some having genus and species, but no scientific name. name. Deal with that later. Okay. Okay. So the proposal was to modify this table to have a scientific name field. Yes. And I'll put the scientific name right after the genus and species and author. Is that okay? Yes. And I'll give it the name as in Darwin Core. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a text field, and I don't know how long they are. I'll make it as long as possible. Okay, so now we have a scientific name field. It's ready for data. Let's put your photo occurrences into the occurrences table. There's another problem. What's the other problem? On the on the photo on the photo um, uh, table, the author the author is linked to the scientific name. It's not separated yet. 